Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Yes. It... Great. Okay. Let's begin. <clears throat> uh, let me share the screen with you. Just a moment. Okay, there it is. <clears throat> well, I'm going to uh, has the attendance list. When you hear your name, please let me know. Let's begin. Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher present. Good evening. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Here teacher. Welcome. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. I am here, teacher, present. Welcome. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Hello. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Good evening. I'm Good here. Evening. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martínez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Gladys Imelda Sanchez. <clears throat> I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Good evening, present. Hello. Jose Raidide Enriquez. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Here. Welcome. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Hi, teacher, present. Welcome, Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Good evening, present. Welcome, Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Welcome, thank you. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present, teacher. Welcome, Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Good evening, present. Welcome. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Present. Hello. Hello. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Present. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Sandra Cecilia Munguia. Present. Welcome, everybody, welcome. We have two chat entries. Alejandro says present, Cecilia says present. Okay, thank you both. Here we go. Okay, thank you. Um, let's begin. All right, so 
Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 3, and that's me, Ivan Doña, at your service. Once again, this is session number 7, and today is November the 8th of 2023. So, let's do this. Um, Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Hello, Janira. Welcome. Yeah. It's okay. Don't worry. So, what do we have today? We have polite complaints, okay? Polite complaints. What is a complaint? A complaint is a situation in which you complain, in which you say what you are not happy about. For example, if, uh, I don't know, you went to a restaurant and you didn't get the best service, you say, I want to talk to a manager, and you complain. You say, like, listen, the service was bad, et cetera, et cetera. That's the meaning of complaint. And the complaint is the noun. So polite complaints. Which of these descriptions fits you best? Best, I'm sorry. Give examples to support your answer. So there are four types of complainers here. The first one is a silent sufferer. What about the silent sufferer? The silent sufferer says, I very rarely complain. Muy rara veces me quejo. So I rarely, very rarely complain. So that's a silent sufferer. Okay, you suffer something, but you, you choose. You decide not to complain. You decide to just, okay, let it go. All right. Then we have a calm collected type. The calm collected type says, I only complain if I absolutely have to. Okay, so this person complains, yes, but only when, when he considers it absolutely necessary. Then you have the next one, which is called an activist. What about the activist? I complain because it is my right. Okay, this person complains about everything. Okay, complains. Mostly because they believe that it is their right to do it. And finally, you have a whiner. What about a whiner? I complain about every little thing. Everything that happens to them, they complain. Okay? They think the supermarket is too expensive, they complain. Okay? They go to the store and they have to stand in a line, they complain. They go to the movies and they don't like the movie, they complain, etc., etc. So that's the idea. They always have something negative to say about everything. So those are the four types. You have a silent sufferer, a calm collective type, an activist, and a whiner, okay? So which of these descriptions fits you best, okay? In my case, for example, and I, I will say that I am a call collective type because I don't usually complain. I don't like to complain very much, okay? So I only complain if I absolutely have to. If, uh, if it is not necessary, I don't complain, okay? Mostly because I know what it's like. I, I am a teacher and and, and <laughs> uh, many times okay, people have complained about me. So sometimes I guess I deserved it. Some other times I think that the reasons why people complain are just not valid sometimes. Okay. So uh, because I know, you know, the reality and the two sides of the coin, I, I have decided not to be a complainer and uh, mostly to complain only if it is absolutely necessary, but that is me, okay? Which of the four types do you do you feel mostly identified with? Okay, that's something that I would like to hear. Can I have a couple of volunteers? What kind of, of complainer are you? Are you a silent sufferer who very rarely complains, a calm collected type who only uh, uh, complains if absolutely necessary, an activist who complains because you consider it is your right because you're paying money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or are you a whiner, a person who complains about everything? So what do you think? I, I just need a couple of volunteers. What kind of person do you consider you are based on these four uh, descriptions right here? Mm -hmm. Carla Peña. Perla, I'm sorry, Carla Perla. Yes, teacher. Um, my example is I complained about people uh, making decisions mm -hmm. uh, for, for me. Okay. So you complain about people making decisions for you, for example? Uh, I don't know when, and when people want something but I don't want, but they want uh, that I have to do that. 
So um, in other words, it's mostly when they don't take your, when they don't take you into consideration when they make decisions. Is that what, yeah. what, what you complain about? Yes. Okay. All right. For example, if they're going to buy a cake and they don't ask you what kind of cake you like, they just go and buy the cake. And even if it's a kind of cake you don't like, they just buy it. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. All right. That's the type of thing you complain about. But my question here is, what? which of these four types of complainers do you feel most identified with? Would you say you're a silent sufferer? You, you, you know, tolerate almost everything? Are you a calm, collective type who only, uh, you know, complains if necessary? Are you an activist who complains because you consider it is your right because you pay money for it, etc.? Or are you a whiner, a person who complains about everything that happens in his or her life. So, Carla, which one do you consider you are? And then Jenny okay. Elizabeth and then Debbie. Uh, sorry. Sorry, teacher. I it's didn't okay. understand. No, it's it's uh, fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. All participation I mean, is valuable. Sorry. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not at a, a specific one of them. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm between of a calm college type and an activist. A calm <laughs> collective type and an activist. Okay, so yes. it's like a combination of both. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 I get it. Good. Um, thank you for participating. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth. Okay, teacher. For me, I think I am a calm collective type. A calm collective type. So yes. you don't like to complain. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I share um, that point of view. Okay. Or I share I share the attitude. I, I don't like to complain. Okay. I only do it when it's absolutely necessary. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Debbie Segura. I complain when I am sure that it's happening something that is not fair, right? Mm -hmm. Like in a hospital, the um i think i think that if i am paying something that is well really expensive the service in the hospital right mm -hmm. and they don't try to treat, treat you really well mm -hmm. i just complain about that and okay. i just tell to the, to the nurses or the doctors okay and so yeah uh -huh. So so would you say you're like an activist? On this no, not exactly. Not at all. I think that I'm a calm collected type and mix it a little bit with an activist. With an activist. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I want like to like Carla. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. Janira. Janira Mendoza. No, uh, Luis Enriquez. I sorry, teacher. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, I, I have ladies my, first. My my phone. Okay. Um, I only complain if absolutely have to. Okay. Because I've learned to complain, but uh, of a manner um, uh, diplomatic, maybe. Okay, you have learned to complain uh, diplomatically. Yes, and and have learned to keep keep close my mouth, mm -hmm. although I feel so bad or so angry. Mm -hmm. But if I do, if I know that uh, that's impossible that the other persons change, mm -hmm. then uh, I prefer to to ch to shut up. Oh, well, no, <laughs> I prefer mm -hmm. to, you could say, I if prefer I, not I to know, say anything. If I know <laughs> if it's worse for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, you can say, I, I prefer to, you know, remain silent. You can, you can say that instead of saying uh, the other thing. So you can I, say, I prefer I can play, to but, remain uh, silent. Okay, I that's, try that's to, to be diplomatic. <laughs> To be diplomatic. And I, I totally agree with you, by the way, that's that's something that I always try to practice. If for some reason I have to complain about something, 
I don't like to be the kind of guy that says like, what's going on here? This is not acceptable, et cetera, et cetera. I try not to be that person. I try to, you know, but, approach. But I, I, want, to, I want to say uh -huh. something uh -huh. because um, I always say that I, I think. You always say what you think. Yes. So you speak it's out your all mind. The time, all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Never. Okay. But I I try to to say it uh, in the best uh, form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like if it. you're going to, you know, uh, say your opinions, then you definitely have to do it diplomatically, right? Respectfully, right? That's the I idea. Need to, I need to let, let them know mm -hmm. my perspective or mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I <clears throat> I try to to keep my mouth uh, closed. Okay. Uh, although I I am a lawyer, and ah, for okay. me, it's, it's, it's oh, we so have two lawyers in this group then. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. Only only okay. that. All right. That sounds really good. Thanks for your participation, uh, Janira, Luis Enriquez, and then Gabriela Sequeira. Hello, teacher. Hello. I think I have the, a mix of all of them. So, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, mix. So, when it's necessary to make a, a voice for the, the, it depends on the, the cause that I feel that uh -huh. the cause. For example, it, when, it, when, it, uh -huh. so, sorry, sorry, when, when would you be a silent sufferer? In what kind of situation? Uh, a silent suffer when I think I will uh, speak something that it offend to another person. Ah, so you prefer yeah. to remain silent because yeah. you don't want to to be offensive. You yeah. okay? In a special when we are meeting with another people <laughs> friends and, at work. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, but but for me it's better uh, to be an activist. An so we can mm -hmm. we can have a complaint okay. with uh, the for play right. Okay, all right, that, I get it. That I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, okay, I get Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Uh, Gabriela. I'm an activist. Teacher. An activist. Okay. <laughs> I'm. I complain in a polite way, mm -hmm. and. And only if I consider that I have the right to demand something okay. that is free. For example? And, well, in the past, I worked as a custom service agent, and I know that it's possible to provide... In center? No, in, no. No, in, in a financial bank. And, ah. and I know that, it, that, if, that it's possible to provide the best of you, so... Mm -hmm. And so that's what I say that if it's if if it's exists a possibility to to do something and make to do your best, mm -hmm. why not why you can't demand that? Okay. All right. So a light, a light way, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally. You have a point right there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean if it's if there's something we can do, I mean, why not go for it? Of course. Okay. All right. I get it. Uh, thank you, Gabriela. We have some chat entries. Uh, Alejandro is participating here. <laughs> Rosa. Uh, for Hello. example, when I when when you go to eat at restaurant, um, mm -hmm. I am I am unhappy about the food or the mm -hmm. room mm -hmm. let's see do you complain yeah okay so do you complain to to the server do you complain to the manager or or do you complain um, yeah. you know uh -huh. um service you complain about the service um, okay. 
No, I get it. Uh, wh when I go to, to restaurants, of course, when you go to restaurants, you expect to get the best service, right? And that, I mean, if, if you don't get a good service, I guess it's okay to complain, but just like um, uh, participants have said in this conversation, the best is to do it, you know, respectfully, you know, diplomatically. That's the best way. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rosa. And thank you, everybody, for your participation. Let's continue. Now, um, let's take a look at this. I don't know if we have time for this. Probably we should move on. But what would you do or say in these situations compare your answer? I just need three volunteers. A taxi driver is playing the radio loudly while you are trying to make a sinful call. Okay, so you are on the taxi or an Uber, okay, and you need to make a phone call using your cell phone. And uh, but the taxi driver or the Uber driver has like this very, very loud music. OK, so what will you do or say in this situation? Or if it has happened to you, what did you do? OK. Volunteers, please. What would you do in this situation? Imagine this again, right? A taxi driver is playing the radio loudly while you are trying to make a cell phone call. You are in the taxi, of course or in the Uber cab. What would you do in this kind of situation? Can I have a couple of volunteers? There's an example here. If the taxi driver were, complain were playing the radio very loudly, I think I'd just speak louder. I probably wouldn't say anything to the driver, but I wouldn't give him a very good tip either. Okay, well, in other countries, People tip the drivers in El Salvador. This is not customary. So um, do I have anybody? No participants? OK, then. Next activity. So I hate to mention this. OK, uh, we have pair work. Use the language in the box to create polite complaints for each situation. Take Then take turns acting out your complaints uh, for the class. Um, what do we have here? You have some useful expressions. Complaining to strangers, okay? You can make a complaint to a stranger. It is possible, but of course you have to do it tactfully. You can say, excuse me, but, okay, so that's definitely something you have to say. You have to say, excuse me, okay? Uh, you can also say, I'm sorry, but um, that's, that's a good way to, you know, express a complaint to a stranger. And then you have complaining to friends and neighbors, okay? People you know. You can say, I hate to mention this, but, okay. In other words, you are acknowledging that you wouldn't like to do this, okay, but you have no option now. And I'm sorry to bring this up. Bring something up means to mention something, by the way. Um, let's put it here. Bring something up means mention something. Okay, that's the meaning of it. When you bring something up, you mention something. So you can say, I'm sorry to bring this up, but okay, I don't know, I have a complaint about your dog. Okay, your dog is destroying my flowers. Okay, or your dog is pooping in my front yard. Okay, I don't know, something like that. So uh, those are some useful expressions that you, sorry, can use in these situations. Okay, so just for you to know, I'm just going to share this with you via WhatsApp. So you can all have it. It's in the manual, actually. But anyway, you can also have it here for quicker reference and access. OK. So what's next? Let's take a look. <clears throat> now, how many of these problems have you experienced compared with a partner? OK. So how many of these problems have you experienced? That's the question. Um, can I have a volunteer to read the first problem? Just read it, please. Who wants to who wants to participate? Please. I just need uh, volunteers to read. Madeline and then Jose. I hate those hawks. Well, not and... hawks, but sorry, those huge. A huge mm -hmm. UBS that everybody's driving. What I don't get is why they can't buy a smaller car. Yeah, I hate those huge SUVs that everybody's driving. 
Mm. What well, I don't yeah. get is why they can why buy, a, they smaller can buy car. a smaller car. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, that's the thing. The SUV is uh, what you call in Spanish, una camioneta, right? When you see those uh, really, really big <laughs> SUVs. Who's speaking? Me, Byron. Okay, Byron. It's okay. a uh, sport utilitary bike. Sport? Utilitary vehicle. Vehicle. Yeah, sport utilitary vehicle. That's what it is. It's an SUV. Mm -hmm. So this person hates the SUVs, right? I hate those SUVs that everybody's driving. What I don't get is what I don't understand is why they can't buy a smaller car, okay? To which I say, well, they wanted to have an SUV, okay? It's their money. <laughs> Let them. Who said I mean? The second one, please. The uh, umbrellas are so poorly made these days. I don't know why they always break in the wind. Yeah, umbrellas are so poorly made these days. I don't know why they always break in the wind. They turn like inside out, okay, in the in the wind. It happens. It's happened to me several times, and it's kind of annoying and a little bit humiliating when people are looking at you, okay? I think they were better made in the past, but I guess there are types of umbrella and also quality of umbrellas. Thank you. Uh, Jose, Maritza Isabel, please. My cell phone never worked around here. I can't understand why the reception is so bad. Yeah, my cell phone never works around here. I can't understand why the reception is so bad. That is annoying, okay? Yeah, everybody goes to, when you're traveling, for example, when I go to work, there are certain, you know, um, sections of the road in which basically I lose all type of signal in my phone. And sometimes the, the most annoying thing is when there is traffic and I am stuck in one of those sections and I basically can't use the phone. So that happens right there. So uh, Debbie Segura and then Carla and then Byron. And the cloud. Um, uh, so it's, it's Debbie, right? Debbie, Debbie. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. The clothes in those shops are unbelievably expensive. How anyone can afford them is beyond me. Ah, you say, how anyone can afford them is beyond me, okay? When you say that something is beyond you, is that means that you don't understand. You, you just simply don't understand. You say, how anyone can afford them is beyond me. ¿Cómo puede costearse esto la gente? Es algo que no entiendo. Right? How anyone can afford them is beyond me. Thank you, Debbie. Now, Carla. I wonder if I'll be, a, I'll be able to get a taxi later. If can be diff, it can be difficult to get one around here at night. Yeah, I wonder if I'll be able to get a taxi later. Okay, it can be difficult to get one around here at night. Well, this is a kind of an old book. Nowadays, this is not a problem. You just take out your phone and you call an Uber. <laughs> problem solved. But before that, yeah, it was a problem to find a cab late at night. I, I went through that several times. Byron. Okay. The college course I want is really popular. My big concern is whether I'll be able to get into the class. Yeah, the college course I want is really popular. My big concern, mi preocupación, right? My big concern is whether I'll be able to get into that class. Because if it is very popular, that means that there is high demand. And when there is high demand, everybody wants to be in. And the more people want to be in, the less oppor the fewer opportunities you have. So that's it. My big concern is whether I'll be able to get into the class. Before we continue, and there's the grammar section after this, do you have any questions about the vocabulary or the expressions used in uh, these six testimonials? Any questions? 
Me? Without the vocabulary. Who's speaking? Always remember to raise your hand if you want to say something. Okay, Boris. Uh, uh, could you explain again say about uh, when you say uh, the explain beyond me? Ah, when something is beyond you, that means that you don't understand. You simply don't understand. For example, uh -huh. imagine there is a kind of music that that you hate. Okay, I'm not going to. There are music. There's music that I hate, but I don't want to mention he, it here because it's everybody has like different tastes. But there is a kind of music that I absolutely hate, and there is one singer in particular that I absolutely hate. So, um, and I don't understand how people can like this guy and his music. Bad Bunny. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't yeah, say anything. I didn't say anything. Okay, the thing is. <clears throat> <clears throat> the thing is, um, there are certain music, right, that I just, I, I don't understand how people can like it. So I say, how people like this music is beyond me. It's like, I don't know. I don't understand. Okay. So <clears throat> that's the thing. Uh, when something is beyond you, 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 what you're trying to say is that you don't understand how that is possible. How would you express that in Spanish? In Spanish. Mm -hmm. Let me think. It's beyond me. Teacher, mm -hmm. I've heard. Ah, uh -huh. uh, oh, pues no, mami. Yo pensé que era doble chip, pero ya vi que no. Oh, <laughs> microphones. <laughs> Sorry for the noise. Teacher, no, I've heard uh, people in Spanish saying, esto me sobrepasa. I think it's the equivalent. Probably. That they don't want, they don't understand mm -hmm. the situation and they say that. Uh, but I think it's the, the the Mexicans who talk like that. I guess. Yeah. I think I've heard it on TV. Uh huh. Maybe, maybe. Um, <clears throat> but I, I'm not sure. Okay, probably it is, but I cannot really say it for sure. Let's see in Spanish. Um, maybe something like. <clears throat> In Salvador, people say, no me cabe en la cabeza, right? Maybe something like that, okay? It, that will be like the closest equivalent to saying that something is beyond you. I guess. Probably there are other expressions, but I can't come up with any right now. I'm I'm out of words. <laughs> so, um, any other questions about the vocabulary? Yeah. <clears throat> I agree with you. Sound like that. I'm sorry? I agree with you. That phrase sounds to me like that. Oh, ah, okay. All right. Um, so um, any other questions? No more questions? Well then, uh, Gabriela. Teacher, we commonly use the in Spanish la frase, no me pasa. No me pasa, ah. Es... Cuando ha sucedido algo y no lo no logramos entender o no logramos sacar de la cabeza, entonces Ajá, that, el... that's more like it. Ajá, yeah, when when people say no me pasa is is that means that they can't stop thinking about it. Sí. Ajá, that that's more like it. But um it's not exactly the same thing as saying that something is beyond you. When you say that something is beyond you is just you simply don't understand how something is possible. But when you say in Spanish, esto no me pasa, it's more like uh, you can't stop thinking about it. Maybe it was something like really shocking or really embarrassing. Okay. And then you, you simply can't stop thinking about it. You can't, you can't take it out of your mind. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. It, I guess it's related. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to do the listening activity. Okay. Uh, if this is correct, say yes. All right. Have you ever had problems with automated phone menus? What happened? Okay. I hate automated phone name, name sorry, menus. They're the absolutely worst, especially when you call the bank, for example, and say like, thank you for calling bank. And they say the name of the bank. If you have a complaint about this, this and that, dial one. If you want to consult your balance in this and that, dial two. If you would like to talk to a representative, dial three. If you want to hear about 
uh, I don't know, promotions and special products, dial four. If you want, and then they, you have to go through the whole menu and then you press one button and then they, it, it takes you to another menu that you have to listen to. <clears throat> you dial the next number and then it takes you to another menu. And I hate that. I totally hate that because I'm, I, I'm a little bit impatient, okay, when it comes to dealing with this kind of situations. So <clears throat> that's the idea. So have you ever had problems with automated phone menus? What happened? We're going to listen to Gabriel using an automated phone menu. Is he successful? Check the best summary. So it goes like A, he completed his business successfully and will pick up his prescription this evening. B, he can't fill his prescription because the machine can't recognize what he's saying. See, his pronunciation is so poor that the system doesn't understand him. Okay, I'm going to play the track. I want you to listen, okay, and choose the right answer. Here we go. If this is correct, say yes. B, listen to Gabriel using an automated phone menu. Is he successful? It was Gabriel. Check the best summary. Hello. Thank you for calling the Dial Right Pharmacy's automated phone message system. Please listen carefully to our menu options. If you are calling from a physician's office, say physician. If you need to speak to someone at the pharmacy, say pharmacist. If you are calling to refill a prescription and know your prescription number, say refill. If you wish to hear these options repeated, say repeat. Refill. Using our automated voice recognition system, please say your prescription number, which is located in the upper right-hand corner in the pink shaded area. 04227-08837. I heard 04227 if this is correct, please say yes. Yes. Now say the phone number where you can be reached in case the pharmacist has a question. 555-333-5123. Five, 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 three, 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 five, three. I heard 555-333-5123. Five, 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 three, 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 five, one, three. If this is correct, please say yes. Yes. Your refillable prescription will be ready by 8.15 a.m. If you would like to pick it up then, say yes. If you would like to pick it up later, please say later. Later. What time would you like to pick up your prescription? Uh, nine? I'm sorry, I can't understand you. I said nine. I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Nine, nine, nine. I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Please call again later. Thank you for calling the Dial Right Pharmacy. Goodbye. Uh -huh. Okay. Even I got anxious listening to that. Okay, so um, which one is it? <laughs> A, B, or C? <laughs> If you have the answer, please raise your hand. If you want to participate, raise your hand. Jenny. Letter B. Letter B. He can't fill his prescription because the machine can't recognize what he's saying. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Everything was okay until he had to, you know, uh, give the final piece of information. So um, what about part two? Listen again, answer the questions. I'm going to play the track again. I'm sorry. I know this is kind of long and, uh, but I want you to listen in, uh, and, and, uh, answer the question. So the questions are number one, what's the name of the store? Number two, what is the prescription number? Uh, number three, what is his phone number? In number four, what time does he want to pick up his, his prescription? If you remember the answer, you can answer this right now. But if you don't remember, okay, I'm just going to play the track a second time. So everybody pay close attention and please take notes. Here we go. If this is correct, say yes. B, 
Listen to Gabriel using an automated phone menu. Is he successful? Check the best summary. Hello. Thank you for calling the Dial Right Pharmacy's automated phone message system. Please listen carefully to our menu options. If you are calling from a physician's office, say physician. If you need to speak to someone at the pharmacy, say pharmacist. If you are calling to refill a prescription and know your prescription number, say refill. If you wish to hear these options repeated, say repeat. Refill. Using our automated voice recognition system, please say your prescription number, which is located in the upper right-hand corner in the pink shaded area. 04227-0828-0828. I heard zero four two two seven zero eight eight three seven. If this is correct, please say yes. Yes. Now say the phone number where you can be reached in case the pharmacist has a question. Five 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 three 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 five one two three. I heard five, 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 three, 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 five, one, two, three. If this is correct, please say yes. Yes. Your refillable prescription will be ready by 8.15 a.m. If you would like to pick it up then, say yes. If you would like to pick it up later, please say Later. Later. What time would you like to pick up your prescription? Uh, nine? I'm sorry. I can't understand you. I said nine. I'm sorry. I can't understand you. Nine. 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 I'm sorry. I can't understand you. Please call again later. Thank you for calling the Dial Right Pharmacy. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so uh, by the way, I'm showing the first answer here. So what is the name of the store? Is the Dial Right Pharmacy? Okay, so that's the first one. What about number two? What is his prescription number? How about this one? Gladys. Yes. Prescription number is zero four two two. Seven zero eight eight three seven. That is correct. Okay. Uh, Byron, number three. What is his phone number? His phone number is five 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 three 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 five one two three. That is correct. Okay. Thank you very much, Caesar. Number four. What time does he want to pick up his prescription? At nine o'clock. At nine. Yeah, that's right. Five. Uh, his phone number is five 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 three 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 five one two three. That is correct. Five. Thank you, Rosa. <laughs> that is correct. Thank you, everybody, for participating. All right. Now, um, I saw that you were having some trouble with this exercise in the platform, right? Uh, some of you expressed some concerns. Okay, via WhatsApp. So here's the listening exercise. It's pretty much the same thing. Okay, the answer for number one is letter B. And then uh, this part, okay, is this is what I believe was giving you some trouble. So I, I'm, I'm going to display the answers. For some reason, you have to answer each question twice in the platform, which is something I don't understand, but well, you have to do it. So um, apparently you have to write complete answers. I mean, complete sentences for answers. So the first one is, what's the name of the store? Is Dial Right Pharmacy? The second one is, what is his prescription number? Um, if you have, if if uh, the platform doesn't accept your answer, you can enter this. His prescription number is, and then the number, right? Zero four two two seven space zero eight eight three seven. Okay. So 
And in the in the second space, you can, if I understand correctly, you can enter the exact same answer and then it will be taken as correct. What about number three? What is his phone number? In a similar way, you can say his phone number is 555-333-5123. And in the second one, you can repeat the exact same answer and I believe it will be taken as correct. And the last one, what time does he want to pick up his prescription? You just complete at nine, like that. Okay, nine, column, zero, zero. And the same thing in the second one. Uh, because I read in, on WhatsApp that you were uh, having some trouble answering that, and which is only normal because uh, apparently it didn't take just any answer. It's, there are like these very specific answers that you need to enter. So uh, if that was the case, you have the answers right here. Please let me know if it works. If it doesn't work, then we're going to have to find a way to, we need to figure out a way to, to do this. <clears throat> Time is it? 8.46. Okay. It's getting late. Because we're going to start with the grammar. I don't think we're going to finish, but at least we're going to begin. Um, have you finished taking notes? If you have, we can, well, I can also send this to you via WhatsApp. Just a moment. Okay. Some are asking for help. Okay, who's 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 painting on the screen? Thank you. There's a spot right here on the top also. Okay, if you do me the favor. Thank you very much. All right. All right, teacher. <laughs> That's fine, don't worry. Okay, so what is this? The lesson objective. By the end of this section, participants will be able to use simple and complex indirect questions. This is not very difficult, but we have to pay close attention because it can be a bit confusing at the beginning. So that's a lesson objective 2.6. Now, what do we have here? This is the grammar. Simple and complex indirect questions. Now, simple indirect questions use statement word order and begin with expressions such as, I wonder, I'd like to know, or I can't understand. For example, you have a question like this. Will I be able to get a taxi driver? Now, you have to be very careful with this because now you have the structure of a question. What is the structure of a question? You know that in a question, normally you have to use the auxiliary first. After that comes the subject and then the main verb. Like in this case, will I be able to get a taxi driver? Okay, that is something that we call a direct question. But then you have an indirect question. What is that? An indirect question, in this case, is a statement, okay? It begins with a phrase like this one. You say, I wonder, I'd like to know, or I can't understand. And then you say, I wonder if I will be able to get a taxi driver. What's important here is that this is not a question. This is not a question. Therefore, you don't have to use the structure of a question. You don't say, will I be able? No, you say, I will be able, like an affirmative sentence. Okay, so that's the idea. Alejandro. Yes, you said, I'm sorry, but... Uh... You was real. I wonder if I wonder if I'll be able to get a taxi driver. Ah, did I say driver? Says, says, I'm sorry. Says, I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> I'm tired. Oh. I apologize. Okay, says so later. Okay. So I I I, I just want. Don't mind. I was don't mind to me. to ask if uh, if there is uh, some difference. No, no, actually, no, no, no. I made a mistake. Okay. If I oh. said driver, I apologize. I'm a bit yeah. tired today. <laughs> no, no. Thank you for bringing this up. Okay. Um, no, it's uh, to get a taxi later. Okay. Sorry. 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 I was focusing on explaining the grammar and I didn't pay attention to what I, to what I was reading. So, yeah. Uh, I wonder if I'll be able to get a taxi later. Later. That's the word. Okay. Um, but then again, I want you to see the difference. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to show it to you using one of these files. 
Okay. Thing goes like this. You can say, will I be able to get a taxi later? Okay. Will I be able to get a taxi later? Okay, so this is a direct question. Now, if you want to ask an indirect question, a simple indirect question, in this case, it's a statement, not even a question. You can say, I wonder, and after that, I want you to take a look at this. When you say, "I will I be able to get a taxi later? This is a yes, no question. When you have a yes, no question, then you use if, okay? That's the word that you use when you have a yes, no question. And after that, you have to finish it like an affirmative sentence. So you don't say, will I be? Because that's the structure of a question. You have to use statement order. You say, I will be, okay? Able to get a taxi later. Ah, oh, sorry. No question mark because it's not a question. So I wonder if I will be able to get a taxi later. Okay, uh, another example, imagine you say, um, let me think, why are houses so expensive? You ask this question, why are houses so expensive? Now, this is not a yes, no question. This is an information question because it begins with why, which is a WH word. So why are houses so expensive? You can begin with one of these expressions like I'd like to know or I can't understand. And you say, I can't understand. Let's move this. And after that, you don't have a yes, no question. This time you have an information question. So don't use if, okay? When you have an information question, what do you need to use? You need to use the same question word. In this case, it's why. And after that, you have to finish this statement like an affirmative sentence. So you don't say our houses because that's the order of a question. You have to use the order of an affirmative sentence. So you say houses are, okay? So expensive, period. I can't understand why houses are so expensive. All right? So that's the idea. Now, those are simple and direct questions. Alejandro. Teacher, I just like to know what is exactly the um, traduction of, of the meaning, excuse me, uh, about I wonder if. Me pregunto, si. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. I wonder, me pregunto. You're welcome. So um, that's the idea. Now, these are, again, uh, simple indirect questions. But what happens when you have complex indirect questions? Complex indirect questions also use statement word order. In addition, they begin and end with clauses or phrases with the verb be. For example, will I be able to get into the class? That's a direct question. So you can say, my big concern is whether, by the way, whether is the same thing as if. Whether is if, is the same thing, okay? So my big concern is whether I will be able to get into the class. Now, this is something that they call a complex indirect question. A second example, how can anyone afford them? Como se los pueden costear, ver? So how can anyone afford them? How, can, how anyone can afford them is beyond me. Let's take a look. I will write both sentences. How can anyone afford them? That's a question right there. So you can say in this case, how, because that's the question word. And after that, you have to continue like an affirmative sentence, not like a question. So you don't say, can anyone, because that's a question form. You have to say, anyone can. How anyone can afford them. And then you finish with this. You can say, is beyond me. Or 
how anyone can afford them is something I don't understand. You can say that. Now, that is a complex uh, indirect question. This requires a little bit of practice and I'm aware of that. And that's what we're going to do. We're gonna be practicing this right now. What do we have here? It's knowledge check 2.8. Rewrite these questions using the words in parentheses, then compare answers with a partner. The first one is an example. Will airlines ever stop losing passenger passengers luggage? So you use, I wonder. You use, I wonder at the beginning. And because this is a yes, no question, you have to use if. I wonder if, and after that, you have to finish like an affirmative sentence, not like a question. So instead of saying, will airlines ever stop? You say, airlines will ever stop because that's the structure of an affirmative sentence. And in the end, you have this. I wonder if airlines will ever stop losing passengers' luggage. What about number two? How do I correct a mistake on my phone bill? Then you have, I'd like to know. If anybody wants to participate, this is a good moment. Ms. Romero. I'd like to know how I correct my, mm, wait, how I correct a mistake on my phone bill. Yeah, I'd like to know how I correct a mistake on my phone bill. I think I'm going and to, yes. Teacher, we all um, have to use the sign of question, question mark. Question mark, yeah. Uh, even though it looks like it is not a direct question. A question mark. Wait. No, the yeah. thing is that it's yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't use a you don't use a question mark at the end because if you notice, this is not a question. Um, oh yeah. Sorry, I was watching the question mark uh -huh. at the first or the direct question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not a question Thank because you. when you say I'd like to know, imagine this if you say this in Spanish. Quisiera saber. You are stating uh -huh. that you want to know something, but you are not actually asking that. Exactly. I was uh -huh. um, imagining the question mm -hmm. mark at the end of this sentence. Sorry. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. If there's a question mark, it, it, it wouldn't make sense. So you just say, I'd like to know how I correct a mistake on my phone bill. I'm going to just use a different color uh, right here. Just let me colorize this. Okay, so that it's easier for you to see um, what color will be good. Ah, green. Okay, so I'd like to know how I correct. You don't say how do I correct because if you say do I correct, that will be the structure of a question. You have to use the structure of an affirmative sentence. I'd like to know how I correct the mistake on my phone bill. Thank you, Ms. Romero. What about number three? Why can't I use my cell phone in an elevator? And you begin with, the thing I don't get is, that will be a complex indirect question. Alejandro. The thing I don't get is why I can't use my cell phone in an elevator. That is correct. The thing I don't get is why I can't use my cell phone in an elevator. You don't say why can't I use. No, you say why I can't use because that's the order of a statement, of an affirmative sentence. So that is correct. Very good, Alejandro. Thank you very much. Number four, how can I get tickets to sold out concerts? It's kind of impossible if they're sold out. But yeah, how can I get tickets to sold out concerts? I want to find out who wants to participate. Jenny and then Noemi. I, I want to find out how I can get tickets to 
to solo concerts. That is correct. I want to find out how I can get tickets to sold out concerts. Very good. Okay, that's the answer. You don't say, I want to find out how can I get. That will be incorrect because that's the structure of a question. Okay, so this is good. Thank you, Jenny. Noemi Alicia, number five. When will the government deal with global warming? I'd like to know. I'd like to know when the government will deal with global warming. I'd like to know when the government will deal with global warming. Correct. Very good. Very good. And number six, who would like to participate? Number six. This is the last one, and then we finish the class. Um, uh, number six. Uh, Noemi Alicia. Uh, why people complain so much in something I can understand. Yeah, why do people complain so much? So you say, why people complain so much is something I can't understand. Mm -hmm. Alejandro, do you have a question? No, teacher, I want to no. participate. Ah, no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, too late. Okay, <laughs> that was the last one. Gabriela. Teacher, I don't know why I'm having problems with the first answer. It doesn't allow me to put the, the answer. Oh, and that's I, I grab Ah, I know, I know, because there's a mistake, okay? okay? This is the problem. A word that is misspelled. Passengers. Uh -huh, they say pass, passengers. It should be passengers, but they say passengers. This is what you have to include. Uh, it is misspelled. You have okay. to intentionally yeah. misspell the word. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. So those are the answers to the knowledge check. I'm going to share this with you via WhatsApp also. Um, just a moment. Remember when we said that, that, that some neighbors were annoying and, and they played loud music late at night? Well, this is one of those one of those evenings. I, I can hear the music playing in the background. Anyway, um, all right. Uh, I also understand that uh, some are having some trouble with the midterm, okay? So don't worry about that. Tomorrow we're going to solve the whole midterm, okay, in class, okay? So if there are any exercises that you uh, are having trouble with, we'll do them here, okay? So don't worry about it. Um, just do the other exercises, okay? And uh, if, if you have questions, we'll solve them in class tomorrow. Uh, very quickly, I'm just going to go through the attendance list once again. Abdi Avisua is online. Uh, Alejandro hey. Jose, thank you. Alejandro is here. Ana Filomena is here. Uh, Ana Yanira is also here. Yes. Andrea Michel is here. Byron is here. Boris Martin. Uh, Selena Quintanilla is here. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado, Guardado Gutierrez is also here. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez is also here. Claudia Yanet. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez is not, apparently. Uh, Devi Natalia Segura Ramos is here. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez is also here. Gabriela Lourdes Sequeira is here. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez is also here. Jenny Elisa, sorry, Gladys Imelda Sanchez was here. <laughs> I saw her. Um, Jenny Elizabeth Santiana is here. Jose Rabin Enriquez is here. Carla Stephanie Perla is also here. Luis Fernando Enriquez is here. Madeline Diana, um, I believe, was here. Uh, Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre is here. Melanie Trinidad Villanueva is here. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle is also here. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura is here. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores is here. Sandra, sorry, Rufino Amilcar. Is not online tonight. And Sandra Cecilia Munguia is online. Okay, everybody, uh, remember, do the exercises in all this section, okay? And tomorrow we're going to solve those that you that are giving you trouble. Um, thank you very much and good night. Thank you, teacher. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night, teacher.